Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a brand new series around iNav 5.0. Now, if you're a regular watcher of the channel, thank you for that first of all, but also you've seen other iNav series on the channel. Things like the iNav for Beginners series 2020 and also my iNav fixed wing setup for 3.0 and 4.0. And also iNav on a multi-rotor where we looked at how all that stuff worked as well. Now I've been playing with iNav for a very long time and iNav 5.0 is now out. Now I've got this Mars plane in and I thought, you know what, it's about time that I put something like iNav into this for the maiden flight and for the review of this particular plane. So it's a perfect opportunity for me to make a new version of my iNav for Beginners 2020 series with iNav for Beginners 2022 with iNav 5.0 because a few things have changed and the stuff that's changed is in Configurator. That's the program on your computer that you use to set iNav up. A couple of things have moved around. So some of those other series, if you're trying to follow click by click, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for you. Now, when I make things like iNav for Beginners, uh, check out the playlist. There's lots of things like such and such for beginners or introduction to such and such. Those topics and the videos in those playlists are specifically designed for those of you that are brand new to something. So if you are completely new, then those are great places to start. They assume a very little knowledge and I don't suddenly go off into three and four letter acronym territory within 60 seconds of the video starting. And that's really what this series is all about. If you already understand iNav, you can probably skip the first three or four videos. I'll put links to the entire series down below and you can just get into the meat of actually how the plane is set up. However, if you are new to iNav, maybe you're a quadcopter pilot that's just used to beta flight and you're thinking of getting to fixed wing, or maybe you're a fixed wing pilot and you've been flying manual and you want to try something like a flight controller, for one of the various benefits, then that's exactly who this is aimed at. If you have some basic radio controlled knowledge, then this series will help you get into the air with INAV and have a fantastic time. So before we get too far into this, let's talk a little bit about what INAV is. I get lots of questions from people who are looking at the INAV series and who are not clear. So it's worthwhile me taking a couple of minutes just to explain how it all fits in. Now, iNav is kind of a super duper stabilizer. You can think of it like that. But let's start with the very simplest and work our way through. So you kind of put it in context of the other things that you might be aware of, things like stabilizers. You might have heard something called the ZOHD Copilot. You might have heard of something called RD Pilot or RD Plane. Where does it fit in all of those? And that's another common question I get as well. Why use iNav versus RD Pilot? And you bump into that kind of question a lot in the forums. So if I put this graphic up first, let's start at the very, very simple end of things. Good old manual flying, where you just have your receiver, you plug your servos into the receiver, you trim everything with the radio, and the flight controller is you. This is how a lot of us have been flying our planes for a very, very, very long time. And all the mixing is done on the radio, all the expo is added, all of the fancy controls that you might need, do things like drop your flaps or things like manage landing gear or flapperons or crow or braking or whatever it is, all that stuff was set on the radio. And that is kind of the base level. The next level up from that is simple stabilizers. Now, lots and lots of these are available on the market. You plug your receiver into the stabilizer and then you plug all of your control surfaces into the stabilizer. And what the stabilizer does is help you as a pilot. So if you're flying along and the wind pushes your model out of position, then the stabilizer will push it back. It kind of corrects for uncommanded movement. The other thing it's also used for some of them have some quite sophisticated functions where it allow you to do knife edge and other acrobatics as well. It'll kind of support those too. Next up from that, in terms of complexity, I would probably say are things like the ZOHD Copilot. That is a stabilizer, but also has a GPS attached. Now that GPS allows it to do some pretty funky things. It allows it to do things like return to home. So if you have a problem with the radio, or if you're using goggles with FPV and you get into trouble, you can flick a return to home switch and it'll fly back to you. 
It'll also do some kind of cool things like as well as basic stabilization. It'll also support things like auto launch. So you can set it up, throw your model into the air if it's a smaller model, something without an undercarriage, and it will then just fly it off for you. The real advantages of all this stuff so far is that you don't need a computer, you don't need any of that stuff. It can all be set up usually by pressing a button and looking at LED lights or by following through the manual and doing things on the radio via the sticks. You can configure it all. And then we move into iNav. So iNav can do everything that a co-pilot can and so much more. So for example, it'll give you things like advanced stabilization that you can customize. It'll let you do things like GPS modes, so return to home, it'll fly back to you, but also it'll do things like autonomous flying and mission flying. It'll also do things like auto launch, again, so you can throw your model into the air and it'll automatically catch it and take it off, it's something that I use a lot here. But it also supports funky things like on-screen displays. So if you're using FPV, whether that's traditional analog FPV or even DJI HD FPV or even some of the other stuff, like some of the new Fat Shark and the HD Zero stuff, then it'll allow you to put over the top of the image key flight information, things like your battery voltage. And if you have a GPS attached, also things like your height, your ground speed, your distance and direction back to home, how long you've flown, the RSSI values, all that really good stuff. So iNav really opens up the possibilities and you can use it as a basic stabilizer or you can just go mad and you can use all of the features and functions. Not a lot of pilots do, but there's an awful lot in there. Then I would say the granddaddy of them all is Arduplane. Now Arduplane is super duper, the, the gold standard in my humble opinion, when it comes to doing things with planes. It also has lots of features and functions as well as everything that iNav does. It'll also do funky things like terrain following. It also has much more sophisticated mission planning. So you can fly around and you can use them uh, RD plane for surveying, mapping, agriculture, all kinds of things. And for expensive builds, that's what people tend to use. However, iNav, with a relatively cheap flight controller, can do the majority of what pilots want. So now we understand what iNav does and how it kind of compares to lots of other options available for fixed wing pilots, let's talk about the kind of stuff that you need. First thing that you need is a flight controller. This is essentially a little computer and you can load it with the software iNav and then this is the piece of hardware that does it all for you. There are lots and lots of different flight controllers, hardware that are supported. There are lots available now made specifically for fixed wing. I'm a massive fan of the Matek wing series and that's what I use an awful lot here. But if you look in the documentation for iNav, you'll see that the number of boards that are supported is pretty extensive these days. And for 30, 40, 50 pounds, $50, you can get a good flight controller that'll be a great companion for iNav when you set it up. The other thing I like about Matic flight controllers is on their websites, they also show you all the wiring. Now this makes the setting up in things like iNav and when you're putting it inside the model, a piece of cake as well. Now you notice there's an awful lot of other things connected here to this flight controller, but the main one I want to talk about here is you need a GPS. Now this external GPS is going to be used by iNav to not only remember where the home location is, where it needs to fly back to if something nasty happens, but then it also allows you to get all that key information, things like height information, distance direction to home, things like your ground speed. The GPS, if you're gonna be putting iNav into a model, I'd spend the extra $20, $30, get yourself a GPS and plug it into the flight controller and that will allow you to unlock all of the really cool stuff that iNav can do around GPS flight modes. The other key piece that you need is some kind of receiver that you can plug into the flight controller. So rather than plug your servos into the receiver, the receiver is going to plug into the flight controller and all your servos are going to then plug into the flight controller rather than receiver. Just like a stabilizer really. The key thing with this is that modern flight controllers these days need at least something like SBUS or CRSF or F port or something like that, that is a digital signal that you can take from your receiver 
into your flight controller. If you are converting an existing model that you already have, and it has an older PWM style receiver to run all the servos, and it doesn't provide an S plus output, then you'll need another receiver that does, so you can plug it into the flight controller. But we'll get into lots more detail in the upcoming videos about how you connect all that stuff together to make it work. So if any of that sounds interesting and you fancy playing with GPS auto launch, on-screen displays, advanced stabilization, lots of other stuff that INAV can do, and you can get your hands on some of this hardware, then join me for the rest of the series. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll download the iNav configurator. It's free and easy to do onto a computer and we'll actually set up and flash the flight controller, put the software on it and do some of the basic configuration. It isn't particularly difficult. The configurator looks very much like Betaflight. So if you're coming to this from Betaflight, a lot of this is going to feel very familiar. But if this is something that's new to you and you've never done this kind of stuff before, I will take it slowly enough so hopefully those of you that are brand new to iNav can follow along too. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video where we'll flash this flight controller with iNav. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.